Hey cruise fans and welcome to my channel Cruise with Grant where we talk about all things cruising to help you plan for the perfect cruise vacation. In today's video I'm going to break down the top three myths about traveling solo when cruising. Whether you're an experienced solo traveler or you're thinking about traveling solo for the very first time I'll have tips for everyone. So without further ado let's get into it. Let's start off with myth number one, which is that solo travel equals single. And that's not always the case, but I often see people refer to solo travelers and single travelers interchangeably. Now there are certainly people who are traveling on their own and are indeed single, but that's not the case for everyone. There are lots of folks who have partners or family members who simply don't have as much vacation time as they do, or they have different travel preferences in terms of the kinds of destinations they'd like to visit, or that they'd rather do land-based travel rather than cruise travel. In fact, one of the things that I really love about the solo traveler label is that it's become this beautiful umbrella that captures a whole range of situations. On my cruises, I've met people who might be traveling with a sibling or they're traveling with a friend, either in the same room or a separate room, and they still consider themselves to be traveling solo because even though they're with somebody, they're still looking to make new friends and have new experiences. This certainly doesn't mean that some folks aren't open to romantic connections, either for a few days on their cruise or even for a lifetime. In fact, on one of my previous cruises on the Norwegian Encore, I met a couple who actually had connected uh, as solo travelers on board a cruise and their romance blossomed. They actually ended up moving halfway across a continent to be together and they're now going on four years together. So when we're thinking about a solo traveler and who they are, as long as we're not making any assumptions, we're going to be open to making some really great connections. I know I've certainly met some of my best friends on cruises that I've been in touch with now for years and years. The second myth about solo travel that I want to break down is that it's expensive. And this can certainly be the case. For the most part, when you're looking at booking a cruise, all of the prices that you're going to see are based on double occupancy, which can mean that if you're traveling on your own, you're actually paying double. They call this a solo traveler supplement. But if you've watched one of my previous videos on solo travel, you'll know that cruise lines are coming up with some creative ways to try and accommodate a growing number of solo travelers. This includes studio cabins that are designed specifically to be a smaller space that's just for one person. Oftentimes you'll find these can be grabbed at a much lower price and you're not paying that double occupancy. But it's important to know that studio cabins are not the only tool in your toolbox if you're looking to travel solo and on the cheap. There's a great website called vacations to go that I don't actually use for booking my vacations, but it's got a great tool that lets you look at the solo supplement. So if you go, you can see whether you're paying 100% solo supplement all the way down to zero, where you're actually not paying anything more than you would for one person at the same price. This is a great tool to be able to look across cruise lines of different lengths to be able to find something where you're paying less to travel on your own. The third myth that I want to break down is that if you're traveling solo, you're going to be spending all your time by yourself or that it will be difficult to make friends. I've done about half of my cruises solo and I can say this definitely isn't the case. The first thing to note, and I've covered this in my other video about solo travel, is that there's a number of different meetup groups that are available on cruise lines. This can include a meetup that's just for solo travelers, which I've seen on both Norwegian cruise lines and also on Holland America. But there are also usually a number of other meetups, including for LGBT plus folks and also for veterans. And this can be a great way to connect with people who might have similar experiences or interests. In addition to the groups that are set up by the cruise lines themselves, I've also seen where passengers set up their own groups to play bridge, to play left and right. So there may be groups that again, aren't on the schedule the first day or two, but those groups may actually approach the cruise line and ask if they can have a space to play games like that and gather again for people with similar interests. If there's not a particular group that appeals to you, also taking part in the activities on board can be a great way to meet people with similar interests, whether it's trivia 
origami and arts and crafts, um, or some of the game shows that they've got on board. Finding those activities and going to them regularly can be a great way to connect with people who are also interested in those things. On some cruises, I've just hung out in the main space where they're hosting a lot of those activities, like an atrium or a lounge area. And generally, you'll see that a lot of the people who participate in those activities are the same and will be there for a number of the different activities. Just a pro tip, you may not want to be like me and get a little over competitive with things like the charades or the Pictionary. That might be not the best way to win friends. When you're thinking about spending your time with people on board, don't also forget about the crew members. Obviously the crew are there to do their job, but many of them are exceptionally friendly and I've certainly met crew members on board who I still keep in touch with. One of my pro tips for making friends with crew members is think about the places that you're spending your time, whether it's a particular bar, a cafe. I spend a lot of my time usually at the casual eatery. And if you go to those places around the same time every day, you're gonna to tend to run into the same folks. So that's a great way to make connections and see familiar faces with the crew members as you're spending your time on your cruise. So having broken down these myths, would you consider traveling solo? Or if you already have, is there something that you might do differently next time? Please let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to check out the other videos that I've made about traveling solo and helping you to plan for an upcoming cruise. If you found this video helpful, please remember to give it a like and show me some love by subscribing to the channel as it really does help me out. Thanks so much for spending time with me today. I hope you have a beautiful day and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.